Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. We are backstage at Reading and Leeds Festival 2022. Gail is fresh from the stage. She joins me now. How are you, Gail? I'm doing so good. How are you doing? Not too bad. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. Welcome back to the UK for a start. I mean, that's got to be so nice, especially after the year you've had. Finally being able to play a massive festival crowd like this. I mean, I imagine that's a pretty exciting experience. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. This is my third time in the UK in the past four months. So very excited to be back. I love it here and I hope to be back again. Getting fully acquainted. I love to see it. I love to see it. And of course, you were actually over here in Europe. I know it was in Ireland, but you did uh, supporting, I mean, I'm repping them on my shirt right now, the greatest American rock band of the past 25 years. Yeah, I said it, My Chemical Romance. Talk to me about that experience. You know, I've chatted to a few of the bands who got to those support slots. Those were shows like no other. That's got to have been pretty amazing, right? Talk to me on that one. So, specifically the first show, I remember I I threw up right before I went on stage because I saw the crowd and well because you do the sound check and you see the field and I knew there's gonna be like I knew there's gonna be people there and I knew that there's gonna be like over 20,000 people there um, and then they all showed up and then I was like oh oh and, that was and, oh my gosh and I just I saw the crowd and I instantly just got nauseous I was like oh my god oh my god and I'd also I, I did the show in Dublin Ireland and I had never been there before so it's also it's a bit intimidating to play your music in a place that you've never been before because you don't know the attitude on it you don't know if people like it or if they even know it um and it was people sing the song back to me and i was able to talk to the band and it just even the fact that they like were just like letting they picked me to open up for them like that was absolutely insane the crowds were just ridiculous ridiculous oh my god those were really special events all those dates like i was lucky enough to go to a few of them it just felt like really really special kind of moment for the summertime really lovely to see how well you received that and i wanted to mention as well you know there was something really really cool about that live set you know uh we'll talk about abcdfu in a minute but i particularly love the way you've rocked it up you did that kind of rockier version that came out there and you see it in the live set you've really kind of gone with that one tell me a little bit about putting that extra bit of edge on there it really really fits the track yes we were speaking about this a bit before the interview you mentioned the movie almost famous sure so when I was 15 in quarantine, I would played shows in four or five months. And I the shows I was playing were like writer's rounds and bars. So like nothing, nothing great. Um, but I saw the room of like a rock show packed full of people that were just sweaty and rowdy and just ready to rock and roll. And I was just like, that that is exactly what I want to do. That's exactly the energy I want to have live. And I'm... I would not say I'm like, I am just rock. I definitely have like pop elements and I have like a rock alternative inspiration. And I really, really try and like focus on that live because it's just, it's so much fun. Like, oh, just to jump around playing guitar and the bass and um, everybody just moshing and jumping and screaming. Like, it's just, it's just a great time. Yeah, absolutely. Fits the vibe so, so well. And we should mention on that track, of course, you know, as a whole, we've just kind of passed like a year since it's come out. And what a year for you. My God, absolutely amazing. Here's a big question. Wild moments what's been the wildest moment since that's gonna come out over the last year anything that's particularly stuck with you from these last months? I imagine too many to list There's, in general I'll, I'll, I'll name a few because I don't think Go I can on. name one going on Jimmy Fallon oh yeah cool craziest thing ever because my mom flew out my brother flew out oh, nice. I wrote the song my best friend my best friend was there her brother was there and I wasn't originally supposed to do an interview and then he saw me sound check and he push time for me to be able oh, to do an really interview nice. he didn't have to do that okay. and I was happy just performing and I remember when they got the phone call and my manager's face I was like oh my god I'm not going on the show like I made my whole family fly out to go see this and we're not going to play like oh my god and I didn't even know if there's going to be an audience allowed and they allowed the audience there and then they had me do an interview and that was very full circle I had the honor of playing Wembley Stadium yes. that was the first gig I did as an 18 year old Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, Harry Styles played that show. Yeah, Ed yeah, Sheeran yeah. played that show. To be a part of that is absolutely ridiculous. Having a song go number one in the UK, that was my first time ever getting a number one anywhere. And I remember they sent in the little trophy, and I was yeah, like, Gail, yeah, and they had the date. And um, I was just, I got a trophy. I never win anything, and it had a trophy, and it had a number one on the trophy. It was like, a competitive person's dream to just have that in my bedroom and getting my first plaque for the first time, like a double platinum and triple platinum that, I remember when I hit gold and we we're like, oh my God, and then it's like tri triple platinum in some places, like it's, Absolutely insane, and obviously I can just keep listening and oh, listening yeah. and listening. But um, I mean, what a year! And what such well-deserved success as well. I know it's just great to see it kind of all continue. And speaking of which, brand new single, basically out today at the time of recording, right? Okay, so tell me a little bit about this one. When did that come together in the writing process? So I wrote the song in February of this year. Um, I was kind of 
in a sense where ABC was just kind of like going crazy in all of the best ways and still trying to come to terms with everything, but definitely it was a little bit more chaotic back then too. And um, I was in a session with uh, Ryan Linville and a girl named Sully, and it was the first time we were all writing together. And we already written one song. And I go on the piano, and we kind of start talking about like religion and everything. And I'm I'm almost a bit, I'm not religious. I was never, I just wasn't raised with a religion and I'm, I would never judge anybody for having a religion. If anything, I'm almost jealous of people who are like religious and like fully believe in their religion because it, the world makes more sense to them. They have a little bit more like comfort and when bad things happen and some very serious things like a friend of mine passed away and some other things happened in my life where you couldn't necessarily just brush it off and be like, well, God is a sense of humor. It's like, it's not funny, you know, like it's, and, and so for me, I, I want to want to have hope in the world. I want to want to believe that there's more good than there is bad, but sometimes bad things happen and you don't get to know why. And then I'm just sitting here so confused. And so it's kind of me wanting to come to terms with like wanting to have hope. I like to see the song in a bit more of a positive light, but it's kind of teetering between trying to decide if there's more good in the world, if there's more bad and what I should believe in. And the kind of hook is God is a sense of humor and I'm not in on the joke because yeah. it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but big message there and clearly connecting with the fans already. And of course, coming from that next EP that's kind of on the way there, um, also featured on that, a collab with Black Bear, one of the hardest working men in show business right now, doing so many cool collabs. Uh, I mean, each of those collabs, I mean, he's just done one with the U's, he obviously, MGK and all that kind of stuff. They all come out so unique and so interesting. Tell me about your working experience with Black Bear and that track coming together. Goodness, it was absolutely insane. Um, so actually the way this song started, I have never cut a song before in my life, but I was staying at this writer's camp and a friend of mine, we were like, she was playing this song that she wrote and it gets stuck in my head. Like, and I keep complimenting her on it with no like anything. I was just like, it's such a good concept. It's called FMK and it's called Fuck, Mary Kill. And it's like, I want to fuck, Mary Kill you. And I was like, that's genius. Like, I love that. That's amazing. And then a couple months passed and then she was like, well, do you want to cut it? And I was like, that I do. But there's some so there's some lyrics in it that like, she talks about like getting kicked out of a bar and some things that just like, I can't, especially back home. Like I can't get, I get myself kicked out of a bar. Like I can't sure. even walk into one, sure, you know? Sure, sure. And then there wasn't a bridge and I wrote a bridge and kind of did a post chorus to it and kind of made it my own and made it more like relatable to me. And then I kind of came started thinking like oh what if this was like a duet because it was a love song and there isn't necessarily a lot of relationship songs on the next project and it's also a love song but it's also a very toxic love song which that's me <laughs> um and, and i adore black bear i mean how can i not yeah, he has course. just been like a god to me ever since i was i mean i was probably like 13 or 14 when i heard his music for the mm. first time and to, to even think to do a song with black bear was like and i remember i had the opportunity to send it to him and I was so nervous because I was just like, he's not going to do this. He's not going to do this and that's okay, but I'm just going to submit it. And I did it. And then he was like, no, I'm down. And I was like, "Amazing." excuse me. And then he DM'd me and he got his number and then we started talking about it and it's coming out and it's actually happening, which is literally insane. He wrote a second verse on the song. Okay. Yeah. And he, he kind of made a, it a bit of his own. And so there's, it's a, not a normal way that I normally do songs because normally I like write it with two or three people and now there's like eight people a part of the song but it makes me very excited and um of course my friend also when when it was just her and another friend of hers that wrote that song now we're like oh my god we have a song coming out with yeah, black yeah, yeah. bear like what is happening so it's and also that was pre abc i think abc was out for a month when i asked it, i i cut it last year and so now it's finally coming out God, amazing to have something like that's been going around for a while to finally kind of have its yeah, release moment yeah, coming up. Yeah. That's really, really exciting to hear. And of course, like we say, yeah, new EP's coming. How far ahead do you think in terms of like new music stuff? Are you already thinking about what's going to come after that? Are you thinking about Where next album, all that kind of I stuff? Oh, wow. I know the name of the album. Oh, okay. There's going to be an album. Um, I, I already have songs for the album. I'm going to do another writing trip in the beginning of the year after touring because one thing I really love about live performance is I learn a lot about what I like live and what I don't like live and what speaks to people and what doesn't and especially seeing other live shows like it's just so inspiring and so I kind of want to do a last round of touring for the past year what I like what I don't like putting that into my music and then just kind of seeing I think seeing if songs can stand the test of time is a really powerful thing like if I have a song that I wrote three years ago and it's still something that I like now 
that means something like in five years I'm also probably going to still like it and so that's what I'm also trying to do with the album as well yeah definitely proof it's going to last I'm going to push you are there any collabs on this album you can kind of hint at or anyone in particular you're working with this time okay so there, there are some new people that I'm working with that aren't on the album I have some like Nothing has been set. There's definitely no. I have yet to ask anybody to do any collaborations, but I have. I have some dreams, but I'm not gonna like say it. But there's some dreams. I have some dreams. There's ideas cooking. Well, let's manifest those dreams. Let's do it. Come on, no, give me, give me a hint. Give me a hint. Give me a clue. A cryptic clue. We won't give it away. We won't give it away. I can't. I can't. No, because I haven't. I can't. I can't. Because I literally. This is me just at 2 a.m. being like, wouldn't it be awesome if blah 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 was on my song? You know, but. I'll get it out of you off camera. It'll be absolutely fine. It'll be absolutely fine. Uh, one final question for you. Obviously, with ABCDEFU, you went so like so over social media, like so many different like covers and really kind of interesting things. You know, primarily on TikTok, but also on YouTube and all these kind of places. I'm just wondering, are there any in particular that you saw any of those kind of edits that kind of stuck with you and thought that's really sick? Because there's been any covers that have kind of stuck out to you over this last year? Yeah, there's been a few that I've really liked. Um, I always very. It's really cool to me when people like do redo the lyrics in their own language something like because I obviously like I won't be I can't do that and the fact that they like care enough to do that and also um, I really loved it when they uh, some these two kids did a fuck Putin <laughs> song with ABC and I was like it appreciate it appreciate it um, also just some of the like heavier like rock the metal covers that have been done like the pop punk covers like that's really cool seeing like pushing it even more in that direction and seeing what people could do with that song is is just really cool and yeah it's just been it's been like just so fun and even recently i guess two days ago i actually went to tel aviv in israel and i um with noah carell i sang abc with her and she started the song off and just hearing her version of it too it's just like so it's so crazy and cool to see people just like literally singing a song i wrote in a room got literally like this like three chairs a little guitar and then to have that to be like in Tel Aviv singing the song with her like what <laughs> you know yeah. amazing amazing milestones across particularly after a year after that um, looking forward to this new EP really nice to chat to you look forward to seeing you in the UK again for more live shows I'm sure which will be coming and yeah just enjoy the rest of your festival weekend alright lovely to see you, lovely to see you. alright Gail everybody <laughs>